Hey, yo, what's up, guys? Zaid here with another episode of Six Experience. Today, we're going to be talking about creatine, the benefits, what I use it for mainly, and what you should potentially use it for, especially if you're doing a cut. So let's start this off with saying creatine is one of the most researched supplements out there. I think it's highly misunderstood by a lot of people out there. But first, start. let's start off with what is creatine. Creatine is both created in the body and can also be attained in supplement form. You create this in order to create energy for your cells. First, it gets converted into adenosine, uh, ADP, adenosine diphosphate, which then eventually gets turned into ATP, adenosine triphosphate. This is what your cell uses for energy. For all those explosive movements at the gym, if you need to go ahead and do a sprint, if you need to be super, super explosive, that's where this energy mainly comes from. So if you need to do that super quick interval in, the, in a run where you're like, okay, all out, that's where creatine comes in. So needless to say, it is super, super important, guys, which is also one of the reasons why our body probably creates it. It's just so necessary for us as human beings, especially let's say we were out in a situation where we needed to hunt something and we hadn't eaten for days, you know, like it'd be it'd be very smart for the body to be able to have a reserve of that you know just in case anything did happen can you imagine us trying to hunt something out there and then all of a sudden it's like yeah we're very very low on explosive energy by the way you're going to need to sprint <laughs> so again super important now how does creatine work this is where i think a lot of people don't fully understand how it works and where there's a lot of confusion by a lot of people creatine basically goes ahead and pulls water into your muscle so intramuscular not on the outside and this is where a lot of people tend to be like eh, what's going on so basically what it does is creatine makes you hold water retain water but not like on your outer layers like like right outside the stomach or anything like that it's in the muscle itself it pulls water in so it makes you look a little bit fuller a little bit bigger more vascular which is why somebody that's going to the gym you know like a lot of bodybuilders use creatine because it makes them look fuller makes them look bigger it's bringing water in if you've ever done a water fast like for 48 hours or something like that which i have and then try posing in the mirror and going like this trust me you'll look flat it doesn't matter how buffed up you are unless you're like ronnie ronnie coleman in his prime then that's a completely different story but unless you're like super fully jacked and even he would probably look flatter than he would if he had some creatine and was pulling water into his muscle like you look flat, you, your muscles look small and that's because you're dehydrated. You don't have water inside the belly of your muscles. So this is where a lot of the confusion comes in. Creatine does make you retain water, but it's in the muscle itself. People think that it tends to be like people get bloated and stuff like that. No, you do not get bloated by creatine unless you're taking high, high amounts of creatine over 20 or you're doing a load of some kind to oversaturate the muscle which we'll get into in, in a little bit it, it's it's very rare that that happens people usually see it on the scale that though that they're holding an extra pound or two of water and they're like oh no i'm getting bloated by creatine and so they stop taking the supplement which i think is a massive no-no um in the sense of whether you're trying to gain muscle be a little bit more explosive at a sport endurance sports it's, it's actually there's a lot of research that supports that on endurance sports it helps out quite a bit and even if you're trying to lose weight so in my opinion i really think that you should just stick to having the creatine on all the time sure it's going to put in an extra pound maybe uh or a pound or two if you have a lot of muscle on the scale but don't worry about the scale. I think people tend to worry too much about the weight on the scale. And let me put it to you this way. Let's say you are 200 pounds and you're an obese person and you don't have your ideal body type, but you want to go ahead and lose some weight to get you to your ideal weight. Let's say it was 180. Okay, perfect. At that point, you look amazing. Now, what if you were 200 pounds and that ideal body weight of 180 was the 200 pounds? Would it matter to you at that point? It probably wouldn't. If the answer is no, it, then it wouldn't. If you were, if you looked amazing at 200 pounds, then that's what you look like. So again, you shouldn't worry so much about the weight on the scale. Look about how things look in the mirror. And I think this is one of the supplements that will help push you towards the right direction just because of even the psychological aspect of looking in the mirror. I know some people are very concerned of what's going on in the mirror. And if you have good amounts of creatine on you, which is basically means that you have good amounts of water in your muscle, 
you're going to look bigger, you're going to look fuller, you're going to look like you're actually doing, like something's happening, and that's going to promote you to keep on going further on the right path to attain your goals, whatever they may be. Now, why am I taking a supplement that is going to make me weigh more on the scale since I'm doing my cut right now? Let me tell you, not only am I taking it for the ATP that it helps me create again, that explosiveness. Again, I do Muay Thai, I do sprinting, I do long marathon running, Olympic lifting and some weight lifting. So yes, there's a lot of benefit I can derive from all this. However, studies have shown that creatine does help you recover, which in my book is something major and it's something that I can definitely use and a lot of people can definitely use out there. Also, just like in the mirror situation, it helps you in that mental sense of getting that extra rep in, getting that extra, let's say without creatine, I was only able to sprint at my max for seven seconds. But with creatine, I can go ahead and sprint for eight seconds. It allows me to work a little bit harder than I did the workout before. So that will potentially go ahead and create some change in the stimulus that I'm putting into the muscle, which will grow, which will in turn help me visualize those things in the mirror, which will keep me going towards my goal. So do you see it's, it's a trickling effect that it helps me out with. And yes, I know this is almost a little meta, you know, a little out there. But I really do think that creatine is one of the biggest supplements that you can take, especially if you are on a cut. It's one of those things that will keep you on track. Now, as far as what it does for your brain, I mentioned it in, in another video, which I will link to up here. But creatine does also help you with cell energy, which helps you feel a little bit more energized. Once again, you get creatine from food and it's also created in your body. One of the biggest sources that you can get creatine from is red meat. And I think for every pound of meat, your body can go ahead and get as much as like one, 1 1.5 grams or two gram one or two grams, I think somewhere around, uh, along those lines, given a pound of meat is a lot for most people. For me, I tend to eat meat regularly. A pound is, I do quick work of that, but that's precisely why I eat that amount of meat. I know that it has creatine. I know that it has a good amount of amino acids that I require in order to make muscle and that protect th that, that energy effect that it has on my brain it's it's very noticeable for me it's very very noticeable for me so that's another thing not only is it good for me when i'm losing weight for me when i'm creating muscle for me when i'm being explosive but it's also great for my brain so far it's plus 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 you know now downsides to it there are some people that feel a little bloated but it's very very rare in my opinion i've taken the supplement for over I believe seven years now. Uh, I've, this is one of the first supplements that I ever took and that I've been on for a very long time, you know, on and off. And I've tried different forms of it. I've tried, there's mainly three forms that you will find. There's creatine monohydrate, which is the most common form to find. It's the cheapest one. It's like 80, 98% pure. That's what you will find mostly everywhere. Then there's Creapure. It's basically like a German version that is 99.99999% natural. So they went ahead and they turned it into Creapure, which is super, super pure. And so it has like a little bit of an up cost to it. Again, take that as you will. If that point, if that 1% more is super important to you, have at it. And then there's creatine A. HLC, I always mess this up, HLC, HCL, it's HCL. That form of creatine can help some of those people that are having issues with bloating. If you're having issues with, like you feel like your stomach gets a little distended for whatever reason that you potentially might have a reaction to creatine, which again is very, very rare, maybe try this type of creatine. This, this is a very fine and pure version of creatine, so you will need a lot less of it. Again, dosing is usually in the back of the label, so go ahead and check it out depending on the product. But if you're somebody that has issues, definitely go ahead and give that a shot. It could potentially help you, but it's it's the exact same thing in my opinion. As far as how much creatine I take on the daily, I take only about five grams. Five grams is totally fine for me. And then I have a bunch of red meat throughout the day. So I'm getting a good amount of creatine throughout the day. Also, something that a lot of people don't talk about is the more you take creatine, the more your body starts getting used to it and the more your body starts utilizing. So for a lot of people, if you've never used creatine before, um, starting with three, three grams is OK and then progressively go up to five grams. And obviously there should be a limit. Uh, obviously, I do not know that limit. I don't think studies have gone out to see how much 
of a limit there is on every single human. So again, your knowledge may may vary. But I take those five grams for that same reason. Plus my red meat, I'm no I know that I'm in a good spot. So take that as you will. I'm sure Ronnie Coleman was not taking five grams of creatine. You know, it's just it depends. It's your your mileage may vary, whoever it is that you are. I'm five seven. Uh, I'm taking five grams. If somebody that's I don't know like six eight is taking five grams and he's super huge, you know, I, I, I think you can up that dose. You know, I think it's safe to say that you can up that dose for sure. <laughs> so again, I'm not recommending anything, but this is mine. Uh, this is a knowledge that I've gained over the years. This is the mileage that I've put in. This is from personal experience. This is from stuff that I've researched. Take that as you will. If you're in my realm of doing a little bit more of a marathon kind of a situation and you've never used creatine before this is where i think preloading your muscles with with like with an oversaturation phase of like three days i think could potentially help let's say you have a marathon on saturday and let's say you haven't used creatine at all for some time i would literally what i would do is i would go ahead and starting monday i would take about 20 grams of creatine a day just to super saturate my mass my muscles and the way i would do it is i would take um five grams and spread it out throughout the day so four doses of five grams for the first four four days then after that it will only just be 10 grams so friday so four days of 20 grams and then friday i would just do 10 grams and then saturday i would just do five grams at that point your body will be pretty used to having creatine your muscles will be super saturated and i think overall you're going to be in a good spot and that could definitely help you out with a marathon more and more we're seeing in studies that this is one of those supplements that's just the shotgun approach in my opinion that it's just going to help out mostly everything and if you're worried about hair loss with creatine this was only based on a study that came out like 10 11 years ago that basically says that it helped raise a hormone that is related to hair loss but nothing has been proven you know that it's more of a correlation kind of a situation than it actually showing that oh because you take creatine your hair your hair there's hair loss so don't even worry about it if you're gonna lose your hair that's more of your genetics you're kind of screwed uh <laughs> And there's, I, I don't think there's much you can do in that regards. But then gene expression is also a thing. So uh, maybe look into that a little bit more. But there you have it, guys. Whether you're trying to put on muscle, you're trying to be more explosive, you want to go ahead and run marathons, or you're even trying to lose fat, I think creatine is the perfect supplement. It, I think it's the best supplement that you can take, period. If you have plenty amounts of protein already, creatine is second down the line then have at it add on to your stack whatever you want to but this is a must this is the supplement that you gotta have in your routine if you ask me protein and creatine no questions asked that's what i would have if i was to take one supplement with me to have while being in an island you know that kind of a situation but in any case guys thanks for joining me on another episode of sage experience comment if you liked subs if you loved and i will be seeing you on the next one guys zay out. Peace.